It's been a few years since I hosted a television program, and it's so great to be back curating a program alongside other people that I feel deeply passionate about, topical issues and conversations in our country focused on young people. My name is Janet Mbogwa. I am a TV presenter, a media personality, and the host of Here and Now, right here on NTV. We're filming this first program at the lovely Nasimi Interiors on Mombasa Road. And we're going to have a fantastic panel lined up for you later on. We'll be delving into the main issue of the day, plus other topical issues that have been making headlines, particularly on social media. But first, a conversation with my older brother, Kevin Bogwa. It was July 2nd of last year. And I remember waking up in the room that I had known for the better part of a year and a half. And I didn't recognize where I was. And I actually thought I was having a stroke or I'd had a stroke. That was my initial feeling. And basically, from that moment until December of last year was a slow uh, spiraling down. Um, things seemed to get progressively worse. I was putting more pressure on myself. And eventually, at Christmas, I cracked. I called the family, told them I needed to come home. And got back here, checked myself into rehab in February. And this is four months into being sober. When I look back at it, what was happening was the real, the real me was for the first time actually popping out. And I didn't, I didn't realize this. I had been living a, a life where I had been moving from one character to another basically just being an actor throughout my actual life. And I hadn't realized that I'd been doing this. I hadn't realized that I dug myself into this hole. And so what happened on that day when I woke up and didn't recognize where I was, it's because the person who woke up that day had woken up for the first time. And there was a lot of internal conflict because I didn't know how to take that. Um, I was fighting a lot with myself. But like I say, now I look back and I know exactly what that was. And it was probably the moment that saved my life. So you just shared that the first time you realized you were struggling with mental health was last year. That's when something shifted. Yeah, I mean, last year is when I started realizing what the actual problem was. Mm -hmm. I think my struggles with mental health actually go way back into my, my early teens. Mm. I think what was happening at the time where I was sort of going into teenagehood and being re really confused about everything that was going on, I started sort of developing sort of a fantasy world. Yeah. Yeah. That I ended up living and populating. And, and eventually I kept doing that to a point where I, I didn't realize that I was living in a fantasy world. Because that's what I remember yeah. about you. You were always, you were, so you change your hairstyle a fair bit. You change maybe your name, your different personas. And yeah. I just thought, oh, my older brother's, a, you know, he's creative, he's being... That's polite. That's it. Yeah, <laughs> just he's, he's, you know, it, this is... In fact, it's almost like this is so cool as a team because you were also very popular. That's, That's true. That's the thing. Yeah. And so within all that, mm. there was a struggle. That wasn't just for fun or for sure. No, it was, it was a way to cope. It was a way to... I guess I, I wanted to present something that was palatable to people, right? Yeah. Because I was struggling internally. I was going through a lot of things, which now in hindsight, I understand mm -hmm. what I was going through. I mean, my depression actually started from a pretty young age. So I decided that to be able to fit into the world, I had to figure out the kind of persona I needed to be. I had to figure out what people were, what people would accept me as. Yeah. And then I really, I guess I really tied myself to this idea of being the artist because that's what everybody would comment about. Mm. You're a really good musician. You're a really good actor. So I, I let that become mm -hmm. uh, my identity. And yeah, you're absolutely right. Through my mm -hmm. teenagehood, I remember going through the crisscross phase, wearing mm -hmm. the jeans backwards, mm -hmm. the, the inikamose hot stepper phase, yeah. um, which are some of my best, I must say. Yeah. Uh, but, um, but there was something. So, what, did, so yeah. what do you think we missed then? as a family, what, what do you think we didn't pick up on? Because I, like I said, I'm looking mm. back at that and thinking, but that didn't manifest as depression or anxiety. Yeah. That was somebody having fun with his teens. I don't think you guys could have picked up on anything, if yeah. I can be completely honest. I think 
I think the fact that even the people closest to me mm -hmm. couldn't see it says a lot about how adept I was at playing these characters. Yeah. This ability to just go in and out and, and not just to play characters, but to know what character to play depending on who I was speaking to. Mm -hmm. Because in a lot of ways, that's also how I ended up relating to you guys. I feel mm -hmm. like I had a character when I was interacting with you and interacting with Timothy and interacting with Sharon. You know, mm -hmm. there, was, there were all these different characters I was playing. Mm -hmm. In some way, I'm trying to mirror the person that I'm speaking to. So mm -hmm. I feel like they can understand me a lot more. Mm -hmm. And, and in some way, I'm just trying to pick on, you know, what it is that you like and what it is that I can engage with you on. And relate to, yeah. so, so just multiple masks, one would say. Yeah. There's a moment I remember very clearly. Mm. It was, was years ago, I think post Berkeley, post the time you were in the US and you, you try to take your life. Yeah. I remember that day like it was yesterday because suddenly folks appeared and there was all this uh, commotion. Yeah. I know how much of that you want to go into, but more than that, what would you say to that person mm. today, to that Kevin, knowing what you know now? Yeah, and no, I remember it very clearly. It was, uh, it was in July of 2007. I was taking a train from Mombasa to Nairobi. And it was during that ride, I decided I was going to end my life. Mm. And I think how I process it when I'm in that phase, because I've been there before, I've been, I've been to that ed a few times. The first thing that I seem to want to do is get rid of all my belongings. So I remember um, pulling the window down of the compartment and just like slowly throwing my stuff out, just emptying my suitcase and just throwing everything out. By the time I got to Nairobi, I didn't even have a suitcase. Mm. And I remember um, walking to the shops and trying to look for something that was either corrosive enough or poisonous enough um, that would do the job. And it was when I actually went into the hardware store and, and was looking at these toxic bottles is when I realized I'm not okay. Okay. And then that's when I called mom and dad yeah. and everybody sort of rallied around right. me at the time. So what would you say to him now? Um, I would say to him that the darkness is a sign that evolution is about to happen. Mm -hmm. The darkness is a sign that you've reached the max of a certain phase of your life, but because you don't know what that next phase of your life is supposed to be, your first instinct is to go, well, life feels like it's over. No, 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 life isn't over. This phase of your life is over. So I actually look at these moments as a sign that you are about to evolve. And there's this phrase uh, that mom loves to use, which is the night is always darkest before the dawn. And that's really true. Mm -hmm. You get to a point where it's so dark. And in hindsight, I look at all those moments and every one of those moments led to becoming a more evolved version of me. I wasn't perfect. I was still dealing with issues. Yeah. But that's what I would tell him. Like, this is, this is a moment of, of decision. You can either choose to, you know, put out the lights or you can choose to sit in it and see what's coming. And I'm glad that I did. Me too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice baby. Wow. That's heavy. <laughs> I didn't know that. No. Yeah. Okay. That was one of the more difficult conversations I've had to have. Um, because I was also learning many things about the struggles that my brother has been going through and facing. But what's great is that he's now sharing them with the world. And more than that, he wants to help so many people cope and thrive. More importantly, he always says to me, I want people to thrive. And so when we come back, we'll also be going to discussing that topic with our panel, delving much deeper into the state of mental health, depression, and suicidal thoughts amongst young people in the country. Stay with us. Mm -hmm.